So today I decided to continue on our uh, French Revolution and Napoleon trend and discuss the coup d'etat of the 9th of Thermidor in the Revolutionary Calendar or in the Gregorian Calendar, July 27th, 1794. Now, to discuss this, we must go in detail about what led to these events. But first, welcome to the channel. If you're returning to the channel, I ask that you please like, share, and comment. If you're new, please consider subscribing. Uh, 110 more subscriptions and this channel will officially be a monetized channel. So thank you all for the support and let's get into it. The French Revolution has now been raging for five years. The king, Louis XVI, and his queen consort, Marie Antoinette, Archduchess of Austria, have been guillotined following the Jacobin clubs gaining control over the National Assembly and the Paris Commune. In doing so, the na in the name of virtue, the French government has created the Committee of Public Safety and Terror to maintain order and the revolutionary principles. Their leader is a man named Maximilien Robespierre. Robespierre was a lawyer who was elected to the Estates General in 1789. He would ride the revolution with the assistance of fellow Jacobins, Georges Danton, Herbert, and Jean-Paul Marat. First, Jean-Paul Marat, the most vocal Jacobin in using terror, and Madame Guillotine will be murdered in 1793 by an anti-Jacobin in Paris. This would incite Robespierre and his committee to come down harder on those they consider traitors to the revolution and virtue. Herbert will be next to die in 1794. He'd be seen as more extreme of the Jacobins, especially after declaring that Marie Antoinette had an incestuous relationship with her son, the Dauphin of France, which was clearly a lie. But he also began to attack other Jacobins, such as Georges Danton and Robespierre himself, declaring them not virtuous and too moderate. Robespierre would hand Herbert to guillotine, the guillotine on the 24th of March, 1794, to stifle his extremism. Finally, Georges Danton, the one who is responsible for the very creation of the Committee of Public Safety, would be executed after returning to Paris. He would speak out against Robespierre and his followers, calling for the end of the terror and for reconciliation. For this, Danton and his supporters would be executed on the 5th of April, 1794. Robespierre would close his shutters in an attempt to hide from the death of his oldest ally. Now, while the Jacobin infighting continued, the nation was suffering under Robespierre and his cronies, Louis de Saint-Just and Georges Couton who would use the Paris Commune and the Saint-Coulats, commanded by François Harinot and elements of the Garde Nationale, to enact their terror. During the 10-month period, it is generally believed across France, over 40,000 people would be killed in the terror. Of that, 17,000 were believed to be guillotined. The National Assembly, many who were moderates and followers of Danton, and even allies to the more conservative Girardins, who had been snuffed out earlier in the year, began to get exhausted by Robespierre and his new faction, the Mountain Guards, or the Mountain, was slowly turning France into a dictatorship, with Robespierre as its de facto leader. Following the execution of Danton, the National Assembly, on June 8, 1794, celebrated the festival of the supreme being after catholicism was snuffed out of france many saw this as a vanity affair for for rose pierre wearing a laurel crown he would speak above the others those in the assembly began to get fears fears of the tyranny the public was talking about as robespierre was now representing himself as a caesaric figure robespierre however would a few days following the celebration, looked to expedite the trials and execution process. After a few more altercations, Robespierre felt feeling ill would take leave from absence 
leave of absence from the government, leaving Couthon and saint Just to control the committee. However, the two were not the force that Robespierre was, and now fellow members of the committee were bringing Robespierre himself into question. On July 26th, or the 8th Thermidor, denunciations began against the mountain. Members of the Committee of Public Safety, saint Just quickly sent for Robespierre. Robespierre was an extremely intelligent man, but he was also an extremely arrogant and prideful man. So instead of seeing the writing on the wall, he decided to make his plea, instead of to the committee, to the very Convention and National Assembly. He would then later in the day speak to the Jacobins themselves on the 8th of Thermidor. Though the Jacobins viewed Robespierre's speech as a triumph, the other moderates, or more right-leaning members of the assembly, had had enough. On the 9th of Thermidor, Louis de Saint-Just began to speak, defending not only the committee, but the continuation of the terror to maintain order in France. Robespierre then took the stand in the convention again when citizen Jean Lambert Tallien denounced the two publicly as tyrants. Quickly, Robespierre tried to respond to the accusations, making a plea to the convention that not only was he not a tyrant, but there, that there was a conspiracy of members against the Mountain's faction. But quickly, from the members, the committee members demanded the name of those conspirators. Robespierre refused to answer possibly because he had yet to make the list, instead standing by what he said. But quickly, the assembly finally had enough. Beginning to shout and assault Robespierre, who at this point was barely able to speak under the stress of the situation, a member of the convention grabs Robespierre, declaring, It is the blood of Danton that chokes you. Quickly, members of the mountain with Robespierre fled to Hotel de Ville, where they began to plan for the response of the convention. Using elements of the Garde Nationale in saint coulat they fortified themselves into the palace of the Hotel de Ville. However, at the convention, they now declared the mountain members of the convention enemies and traitors of the state to the state, and they put out arrest warrants for the members of the mountain who are now in open revolt, including Couthon, saint Just, the head of the Garde Nationale, François Harino, Robespierre, and even Robespierre's brother. At the convention, men like Joseph Fouché and Paul Barras, men who would be instrumental in the rise of Napoleon Bonaparte, would assemble a non-Robespierre loyalist Garde Nationale. Commanded by Barras himself, they would march to the Hotel de Ville, a little after midnight. The Garde Nationale arrived to the Hotel de Ville, at the sight of the numerous soldiers, many saint culottes and Robespierre loyalists, began to flee. Inside, Robespierre and his supporters were attempting to contact the Revolutionary Army to march on Paris and seize control of the Assembly. But outside, the screams were heard and gunshots fired. Couthon, who was paraplegic, began with a saint culotte to attempt to, to flee, while others like Robespierre and saint Just took up arms ready for the hand-to-hand -hand combat to begin. The Garde Nationale then stormed into the apartment of the palace the conspirators were in. A violent melee began, with hand-to-hand -hand fighting, but also point-blank shooting. Now, what happened next is one of the most contested situations in Robespierre's life. But during the melee, Robespierre was shot in his jaw, shattering it in pieces and rendering him, rendering him unconscious. One theory states, finally, he saw the writing on the wall and what was happening. Robespierre attempted to shoot himself in order to not be guillotined or what other fate would await him. Another was that a soldier by the name of Charles André Merda saw Robespierre and wanted to be the man to end him and a hero and shot him at point blank range, shattering the man's jaw. The final theory, which was actually shown in the French government's 1989 series La Révolution Française, a celebration of 200 years since the revolution. It portrays the chaos in the Hotel de Ville, and instead of a suicidal Robespierre or a fame-seeking Merida, what happens is Robespierre is tackled and in the process shoots himself in the jaw. 
whatever it may be, by 2.30 in the morning on the 10th of Thermidor, or July 28th, 1794, all men from Robespierre to Harano were placed into custody. Barras marched with his prisoners back to the convention, where they were held in a small apartment of the convention building. A surgeon arrived to care for Robespierre, who was slowly coming back into consciousness. They wrapped his jaw in a bandage to alleviate the pain. Unlike their victims, Robespierre and his followers would not go to a show trial. The convention had already sentenced all men to death. Ironically, using a law called the Law of the 22 Prairiel that George Couthon himself had created. Robespierre and his 20 followers, around 6 o'clock p.m., were loaded onto a wooden cart and began their trek to the Place de Révolution, where, over the past 10 months, their victims were guillotined, including Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. The crowds cheered at the sight of Robespierreists being brought to the guillotine. They cursed the supporters and breathed a sigh of relief that the fall of Robespierre would bring in the end of the terror. One woman screamed, Go now, evil one. Go down to your grave loaded with the curses of the wives and mothers of France. saint Just would face the guillotine first, along with eight others. Robespierre would be tenth, He'd walk to the top of the scaffold where France's official executioner, Charles Henri Sanson, awaited him. Sanson had been for ten months the tool of Robespierre, and now he would be his final victim of the Reign of Terror. Robespierre removed his coat and then placed his hands behind his back to be bound. Sanson, though, in order to be sure the cut of the blade would be as clean as possible, removed the bandage holding Robespierre's jaw in place. The crowd mocked Robespierre as he let out a violent scream of agony as his jaw collapsed. He was then placed on the board and slid into position while still screaming. Then he would be beheaded. The crowds would cheer for 15 minutes straight and the bodies of the Robespierreists would be transported to Erancy Cemetery where many of those guillotined were interred. However, the remains would not remain there long. In 1844, the remains would be moved to the Paris catacombs. Unlike others, though, these men would not receive a plaque to commemorate them, instead being lost amongst the hundreds of thousands of skeletons. The fall of Robespierre would end the reign of terror. Now, in general, the fall of Robespierre and the Jacobins would have been viewed as what stalled the career of Napoleon Bonaparte. Instead, it would actually work to his advantage, if not for the Constitutional Convention of the 13th of Vendemir, which signaled the Royalists of France that the convention was weaker now, Napoleon would have never been appointed to put down the Royalist uprising, and had he never done that, he would never have been made commander of the Army of Italy. But more importantly, the fall of Robespierre was the end of a saga of extremism. The Mountain and Jacobins insisted that in order to be virtuous, Terror must be the order of the day. At the end of this reign of terror, almost 50,000 French citizens had been killed by state-sponsored murder. A terror we would not see again until the rise of the authoritarians of the 20th century. Robespierre himself, instead of being remembered as a hero of the revolution, he is remembered as a tyrant who let his ego lead him to his death and the death of tens of thousands and paved the road for Napoleon Bonaparte's rise to power. All right, friends. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you really enjoyed the video. Um, again, I'm trying out new things. Like I said earlier, uh, we are 110 away from being a monetized channel, so uh, I'm really trying new different things. The Napoleon video did really well, so that's why I just thought, you know what? Let me just milk this French Revolution thing that's going on. So, thank you so much for your continuous support. I greatly appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, I really hope I earned your subscription. I thank you so much for joining us. If you're returning, please like, share, and comment. And we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.